Angie from Canterbury Trails Farm. Today I'm going to show you how to luminate a small teddy bear. And this is a, a cute little gift for if you save as a shower gift or perhaps a Valentine's Day gift. And it's just a real fun little project. I'm just using the smallest loom that comes in the standard set. And it is approximately five and a half inches wide in diameter. And I'm using this... I, I wanted to do this pink and white bear and it says baby it's very soft it's pink and white it's baby yarn and because it's so lightweight and the individual yarns are so thin I'm working from the center and the exterior of both skeins so I have four strands that I'm working with and that's just going to make it uh, have this thicker so I don't see a bunch of gaps first thing you need to do is you need to loom knit. I just used the E-wrap stitch. It's all I used. And you want to loom knit for approximately 8-9 inches in a cuffless tube. That's all I've done. And now we're going to do a bottom piece that will fold over and give them a flat bottom so the teddy bear can sit down. And how we're going to do that is we're going to loom knit on half of the loom. So I've already gone ahead and I have, you want to use your little holder peg as your marker. And so you want to just loom knit on the half. And we're going to go back and forth on the half of the loom until we've knitted a separate little section that we can use to fold over and sew onto the bear to give him a flat bottom. And as you loom knit on your half of your loom, you'll start to see the piece of the fabric separating and looping up in sort of like a tongue or a panel, a separate gore, whatever you want to refer to it as. And it will start forming itself as you start working on just half the loom. You don't know how to loom knit I do have a extensive video on intro to loom knitting it's also in with a sock video and it is in my loom knitting section I also think I show you how to loom knit on the hat video and on the afghan video but just in case let me just show you the simple e-wrap you're just taking it and wrapping it around your post so it looks like a small lowercase e and when you start out, um, you will obviously need to do two full rows all the way around because you have to have two rows to loom knit on. When you get to where you are going, hold it. Slide your hook under the bottom most loop closest to the base of your loom and pull it over that top row. Now when you're doing the half loom, the end ones may be a little tight for a few rows and then it will start loosening them up. Here we go. Stitch this bottom half. When we come back, I'll measure it. We'll need to complete this project a small loom. And if you watch my videos, I use this the interior portion of this flower loom as a small loom and it measures approximately two inches in diameter so if you have a small loom that measures about two and a half inches in diameter that's what you want to be using and we're going to be using those to make the arms the legs the bottom of the arms and the legs and the ears fiber fill or cotton batting and you're probably going to need, you're going to need a needle, a long needle, like taking it off the loom kind of needle. And you're probably either going to need some kind of eyes or other contrasting black and nose color pink or whatever you decided to make your nose out of. I've stitched a few rows and I wanted to come and show you what you're going to start seeing. You're going to really start seeing this, you can see right here, there's a gap getting a, a larger gap there. I'm getting a larger gap over here. 
so you can see these two gaps because it's not connecting it's, it's making a flap and it's going to make a flap and we'll be able to fold that flap over and sew it to the rest of the bum here so that's what you'll start seeing that and when you start seeing that that's exactly what you should be seen. I've done the last part and I'm going to show you how to take that off the loom here. And I have knitted, working on half the loom, for approximately six inches. So we have this separation. You can really see it now. There's a hole on each side. And so you can really see the fold there. I'm going to show you how to take this off of the loom. So let me do the last row here. to take this the part that we've been working on the bottom of the teddy bear we're going to just take that part off for, for right now here so we're just going to take it off just like you take it off of a standard loom I like to use these very long sturdy upholstery needles I tend to crack those little plastic ones that come with the kits so you can just find these in the upholstery section of any sewing thing. Probably just on lot look online too. Um, I guess it's about three or four inches. Okay, when you get here. Okay, so you can see that we have this flap that we've done, and this part is still on the loom where we left it, the other half where we stopped of our eight inch tube. So what I'm going to do is just sort of go through here and just going to, I'm not going to do like cinching or anything. I'm just going to sort of feed my needle through every couple of them. Go back like a stitch just to sort of make it sturdier so it's not all moving around and flopping around on the thread. Okay, and at the end just sort of do like a little stitch. And I'm not going to cut that yet because I don't know. I might need it for something. So I'm just going to leave that. Okay, so here's my, my little thing there. All right, now taking the same yarn, and I don't think it's necessary to use all four like I've been using. I've been using four because it was like that baby yarn. So I'm just going to use two strands. Because we can't do a knot like we would in typical sewing, I'm going to feed this through this first loop. And I'm just going to tie it in a knot so we can hold it there. Turn those tails off. Okay, now I'm going to remove this section of my knitting. Our tube with this flap, and this is the bottom of the bear. So it's going to come up here, and we're going to join this. This is the bear's behind. Pins might be helpful to hook it together so you can start to see what you're doing here. Sew this part together. I'm not going to sew the part I pinned yet, though. on this small little internal loop. I made four smaller tubes and if you've watched my sock booty video then you know how to do these. They're just they're just tubes and I just cinched up the end when I took them off. Each one is approximately four and a quarter, four and a half inches long. So you need four of those. Those are the arms and the legs. Okay. So make four tubes. So you need those four tubes. Now, the next thing you need, and these are going to be the ends, the hands and the feet that are going to be, we're going to sew those after we stuff it. We're going to put those on the ends of the hands and the feet. So what these are, are approximately an inch. That's all you're going to knit on the small loom is an inch. You're going to take the one end off the loom and cinch it up, and then you're going to go around and you're going to cinch up the other side. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch my St. Patrick's Day video where I'm making the pot of gold. I made a whole bunch of these and it was super fun. For some reason, these are so much fun to make. I don't know why. You can make a lot of things out of these little tiny things and just, just knit for about an inch, an inch and a half, 
cinch it up, pull it off the loom, and cinch up your other end. And you're going to need four of those little medallion-like things, one for each of the arms and the legs. So four tubes, four of the little medallion things. And you could technically skip this if you want to, but it's not going to give your arms and legs that 3D effect of having the paws at the end. So then I did three, and the one came out a little longer than the other, three more tubes. And these are about two and a half, two and three fourths inch. And what we have here is two ears and a tail. So, so you've got looking at four tubes, three smaller tubes, and the four little like medallion things in addition to your bear. We're going to need some fiber fill. So I want to, I'm not going to stuff my ears and my tails, but I am going to stuff my arms and my legs. And I don't want to overstuff them, so I'm just going to do We're going to stuff our bear. And remember the ends down there aren't completely, we haven't sewed the two pieces together, we've just sewed the two because we're going to stick our legs in there before we sew it together. And remember somewhere up here we're going to separate his yarn around to make his head here. Before we do the arms and legs, let's go ahead and do the top of our bear. So stuff it and you've got this, you got your tail from where you made it and you need your two ears. I'm going to fold, I'm going to put the ear the ears where I want them. I'm going to fold the raw edge under. As I do that, I'm going to pin it. This is where you could really, if it, if you don't, if you think it's too long or whatever, you can go back and you can roll things under to adjust your bear's look here. And I think I got too much ear sticking out, so I'm going to shove it down farther. I don't want to rub it. Just work with it until you think you have the amount of ear that you want there. Um, it's about an inch and a half is what I ended up. And I folded it under and I have pinned it. All right, now I'm going to take my yarn. And remember that since I can't do a regular knot, I'm going to pull it through here. I'm going to tie a knot. All right, I'm just going to go through and I'm going to sew this together just like I would fabric. The top here, when I get in between the ears, I'm just going to do a whip stitch over the top. Okay, do a few stitches to secure it. Those pins is very important that whenever you're making, if you're making it for a kid especially, that you always double check wherever you've put a pin. Squeeze it if you have to. If you're really, it's better that you get poked than to give it as a gift and have a child get poked. But mine's just gonna be for a decoration. So there's our top and our ears. Okay, so we've got our little bear here and what I'm gonna do for the head, it's just sort of a ma about feeling around and looking at what you've got, the dimensions, and where you sort of want to put, make the head. And so I've sort of squeezed it. I'm just going to take yarn. I'm just going to wrap it around it. And I'm going to tie it. So now we have the bare head, and you can mold it so it's more round and stuff. We'll work with that when we get closer to the end. Okay, so here we have his body. All right, so what's next? We've stuffed our little tubes. Let's put him over here for a minute or her. And we've stuffed our little arms and legs on these little medallions. I have left, for the most part, it looks like about 12 inches of yarn on the end of each one. I always use, whenever I'm doing things in pieces, I always leave about at least a foot of yarn, sometimes longer. I always err on the long side 
and I just leave them attached because you never know when you're going to need to it's going to be easier to sew it just because you've already got it on there all right so this part that we cinched up at the is going to be the like the thigh or the shoulder and the open end is where we're going to be adding our medallion and how we're going to do that is I'm just going to go around and I'm just going to sew because these are the paws so I'm just going to hold on to it and you can pin this if you want and I'm just going to whip stitch around the edges pause sewn on to the arms and the legs okay first thing I want to do is I'm going to line the we had the opening we left this where we were sewed the bottom shut and we had these openings this was actually pinned but I unpinned it to look at it here and you just want to want to put your leg just sort of look at eyeball it and see where you think it looks good this leftover yarn I'm just going to shove it in there that we had from sewing the bottom flap and I'm putting the sewing part of my flap on the back and I've left a lot of yarn on the end of my leg from when I cinched it up. So I just want to make because I have this the, I have the seam where I've pinned the side flap so I'm just going to go in there and I'm going to go up and sew the where I have it pinned. So right back down just the way I came. Now underneath this we still have pinned the um, flap. So let me sew that real quick. My Where my flap is is making a little bit too much of a triangle. So I'm just going to tuck that in. I'm just going to to start with I'm going to go up through the leg and I'm just going to sort of whip stitch around that end of the leg where we've cinched it up now I want to go around the front of it and I just want to pick up a few loops of thread or yarn here and there underneath of it so there's just not like so we sewed the one so we don't want it just sort of like a gaping hole under there and obviously if you're making it for a toy it's going to be need to be a lot more secure than it's, if it's for a decoration or for an adult notice that I have some yarn attached from where we sewed up the flap so I'm just going to go ahead and use that same yarn and it looks like I'm going to run into the same problem over here so I'm going to with I don't want it to have so much of a triangle so I'm going to tuck that in the bottom is going to go right back up to where we're going to put our leg now this has some attached to it I'm not going to need it so I'm just going to take it off using the other leg as my guide do the same thing I did with the other leg I'm going to go around the outside and whip stitch it into place okay now our bear has legs I've used that where we closed it as the back part and I can play with that and you can even go if you don't like it you could even do some more stitching to make it lay flat but I'm just going to sort of poke it in there right now the arms again I left yarn on it from when I cinched it shut thing I did the other place I'm going to look and see where I want it I'm going to hold it down I'm going to go around and I'm going to whip stitch the arm into place then I'm going to do the same thing for the other arm the other arm I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to find the place that looks like the same on this side I'm going to sew it onto the body Obviously this tail is too long, so what do I want to do? I want to roll my tail in the thread that I left on my tail. I'm going to put it in position, and I'm going to push it, position mine sort of over the seam. Just sort of camouflage some of that seam that we 
uh, made when we were sewing it together. And just like I did for the arms and the legs. I'm going to go around. I'm going to whip stitch it to the body. What does that leave? That leaves his face. And I'm just going to use a little bit of a brighter pink. I'm just going to go up here where the nose should be. You don't want to pull real hard because then it'll make a big pucker. And I'm going to make mine sort of triangular. Here we have a nose. You're going to need either googly eyes or button eyes or I'm just using some black yarn. I'm going to go deep underneath the fiber fill. I don't want that black to show. I'm going to poke it under there. I'm going to use another piece of the paint and do just a little, a little line right here. I don't want to make a great big mouth or something, but I'm just going to do like a little, just like a V sort of. I'm just going to work with them so I can mold them how I want. I'm going to squish the face forwards to create the snout effect right there. So that's our bear, and it it is a little bit of a construction job there. you got multiple pieces, so be patient with it. This has been Angie from Canterbury Trails Farm with our little loom knitting bear. And I hope you have fun making them. Please like and subscribe. And we'll see you in the near future. Bye.